I want to go back. I want to take you back in time to about a year or two ago when Donald Trump had a, an immigration ban from certain countries. And I want to put some perspective on it because I think that there's too much of a misinformation, uh, an active effort to, to misinform people and to make this an emotional battle that's not true. And so I want to talk about that here. Donald Trump did not ban immigration from every single Muslim country. If he did, that would be possibly wrong. That would be, you know, discrimination. But he, it is legal. It is legal for the president to discriminate if he so chooses, because the president does have the final word in who is and is not allowed to enter the country. The president has the legal power to close the borders. If he wants to, the president does have the legal ability to do that. Based for any reason, for any characteristic, that's in federal law, that's in, I forget, it's United States Code, I forget which one. I'll have to go look it up, I'll put it in the description. But he's able to do it. The president is able to just unilaterally write a, an order to uh, stop Im immigration by anyone for any reason. Um, so there's that. But what, what happened and why did it happen? President Trump, a couple of years ago, he issued a presidential order that, an executive order that from seven specific countries, which are Islamic, that there's going to be no immigration, no travel into the country. And the reason why, the reason why those seven specific countries is because those seven specific countries were not cooperating with the NSA or the FBI or any, any of our federal agencies when it comes to identifying and t making a list of criminals and terror suspects or terror known terrorists. They were not giving us their records. They were not keeping any records because they don't think it's a problem. That, you know, in these particular majority Islamic countries where Islam is the government, do you understand that there are some countries in the world where Islam is the government? Those include Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Somalia, etc., and so forth. I can read you the Global Terror Index. Did you know that there is such a thing as a Global Terror Index? There's people who use statistics and data to create a mathematical representation of the level of terrorism that exists in various countries. And did you know that Syria and Somalia and Iraq and Afghanistan are at the top five? And they have been for the last 10 years, just about. They're consistently in the top five most terrorist countries in the world. And that's not me spouting my opinion. That's the Global Terror Index. That's, you, you kind of can't argue with that. It's basically mathematics. It's just math. It's just counting up the likelihood and level of terrorism that's going on there. And so these particular countries are in the top 10 at least. And most of them, the most of them are in the top five. You know, countries that restrict Islam, such as Japan, they have a harsh restriction. They're down at, they're down at two. They have very little terrorism. Countries that are permissive of, t of Islam to exist, but they are uh, watchful of it, such as France, uh, United States, we, we, we sit right around the middle. So... Right at like five, five point six. So you see, countries that restrict Islam, they, they they ban it. They say Islam is restricted. They have a very low, very low level of of terrorism. Countries that try their best to prevent terrorism, but they do allow Islam. So they say no to the, to terrorism, but Islam is okay. They're right in the middle. They have a, a, a terrorism index of around five. But countries where Islam is the government, like the government of these countries is Islam, like Somalia, like Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan. And by the way, these are battleground 
countries. Keep that in mind. They have in a, a terror index of n 8, 9, and 10, depending on the year. S and some countries, such as Syr Syria, are in the, consistently, again and again and again, are in the top five. But you might notice that Iran is down around a four. Why is that? Because it's not, it's not down at zero, is it? But it's because they, they don't target themselves. Islamic terrorists don't target themselves for no reason. Islamic terrorists target non-Muslims to kill non-Muslims to attack non-Muslim countries. When Islamic terrorists get everything they want and make their perfect utopia of an Islamic country that is exactly what they want it to be, then they stop attacking that country because they're not, they're not trying to... Uh, sorry, I scratched my face. Because they're not trying to attack Muslims. They're trying to attack Kafirs, what they call Kafirs. In the Islamic vocabulary, in the Islamic dictionary, in the Islamic dictionary, uh, non-Muslims who deserve to be attacked and destroyed are called Kafirs. So anyone who, you know, if you've slept with your girlfriend without marrying her, you never married her, you just slept with her, they, they think that you need to die. If you eat, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you used to be a Muslim, but now you're a Christian or a Jew or you're something else now, you're now you've become an atheist, you're a kafir. They want to kill you. That's, that's what the religion commands. There's a various, if you're a homosexual, Islam, the, the religion of Islam calls you a kafir. K-A-F-I-R. It's a bad name. It's an insult. I'm a kafir. According to them, I don't, I'm not, a, okay. I'm not a kafir, but they will call me it. So that's what they call me. It's not what I call myself, and I don't agree with them. Their entire religion is false, and their entire religious belief system, and their entire religious vocabulary, and their entire religious judgments are mistaken. But that's what they would call me. They would call me this. They would call you that. If you belong to a country that has waged war against Islam, they would consider you to be also a kafir because, by association because you're part of the country. It's national. That's a viewpoint that is in Islam, is a national viewpoint. So if, you, if your country has fought against terrorism, the terrorists consider you to be their enemy. They're not making any distinctions based on person to person, individual. They view you from a religious perspective on a country basis. But you see, Islamic people are not targeting each other for the most part. For, by and large, when there is terrorism, it is targeting external targets because they're trying to bring down their iron fist on you to attack you because you're different. So you might notice that Iran and Qatar are very low on the list because they are already 100% Islamic in a way that the, 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 the people who are in charge there and the people who are Islamic terrorist activists, they're already happy with it. They don't care. They're happy about it. So it's fine for them. And that's, or, or else, in some states such as Saudi Arabia, which was really a bad, they are terroristic themselves, but they're also keeping themselves under harsh control, but they're still terroristic. And Qatar, they're terroristic, but they're keeping themselves under harsh control. When there is a strong government that is putting a strict iron fist of restrictions on Islam activism, that's when you have a low on the list. But, I mean, I'm talking about dictator level. Like, Qatar is a monarchy. Saudi Arabia is a monarchy. And these are harsh, strong governments that have very, very strict control, like police state control. It's, it's So, you know, in America, we have police, but we're not a police state. In, in Qatar and Saudi Arabia, you're having a very strict control, like Iron Fist. They're watching you every minute because the country, the, the government of the country has a political desire for peace, even though they agree with you. They agree with Islam, they agree with the terrorists, 
but they, they are in mental agreement with the terrorists. But for now, they are in physical, they are physically restricting it in order to have a political goal, which is for them peace. So that, you know, they believe in it, they'll send the money, but they won't, you know, they won't like physically allow it to happen and be done in their country. But, you know, the other thing is, they're not a target. These other countries are not targets because, for example, Iran is the terrorist country. It is the country, and Pakistan are the countries that are in, in charge of terrorism. They are run by terrorists. You know, p you know, the people of Hamas, you know, in Gaza, are not attacking themselves. They're attacking Israel. So you might ask, well, wh why aren't the Gazans attacking themselves if they're so terroristic? Because they're attacking Israel. They're attacking Jewish people. They're attacking Christians. They're attacking Christians and Jews and trying to blow those guys up. Islamic terrorists are not targeting themselves. They're not targeting Islam. They're trying to target outsiders. That's the point. So when you're looking at why does Iran stand low on the list, it, and why does Somalia stand a little bit lower on the list than Syria, it's a 7.8, whereas Syria is an 8. And... Uh, others like Afghanistan are like a n 9, 9.6 or something. It's because Somalia and Iran are, the whole, the whole country is terrorism. The whole country is completely controlled. It's like they've already won. They've already won. The battle is over. Now they're targeting outsiders. So, you know, you might notice that Iran has a relatively low, uh, terrorism index, but all the countries surrounding Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, those countries have extremely high terrorism indexes because Iran is exporting. They are an exporter. They are, they are activists. They're trying to send all this terrorism out because they have already completed, they, they've created a utopia for themselves. They think that that's their country is Islamic terrorism, they're, they're not targeting themselves, they're targeting everyone else around them. That's why. So you might notice that the next door neighbors of Iran have extremely high terrorism uh, indexes because Iran is pushing that. You know, a lot of these, you know, you notice that there's a lower terrorism index for Islamic countries that are secular. So for example, Turkey is secular. Uh, I believe Indonesia is relatively secular. You know, various ones like Cameroon, there's various other ones, they are strongly secular, or else they're a backwater. That's one more reason, is that nobody cares what's going on in Qatar. Nobody cares what's going on in Cameroon, because it's unimportant. It's a backwater. It's relatively un... It's not... Nobody notices it. Nobody goes there. It's like, you know, it's... it's uh, it's like in America, people don't worry about what happens in a small town in a backwater because we do have small towns, and it's really what happens there doesn't hit the front page news. And quite frankly, bad guys don't go to, to those places. Really, I mean, you know, major, major bad guys, like national level bad guys, don't go to some small farming, farming town in some, you know, Bible Belt state because they just don't care. It's just small. It's, it's unimportant to them. Nobody worries about Qatar. Nobody worries about Cameroon. They're worrying about, you know, the, the big leagues. So that's, that's one, more, one more issue. But why did Donald Trump ban these seven countries? Donald Trump didn't ban some other countries that are very, very high on the list, that are higher on the list than others, because they were